All right, another coffee episode. We've been gone for a while as we prepared for and finished the Jolly Big Throws Clinic. Um, we are going to do the next few episodes kind of uh, reviewing the clinic, what happened during the day. Uh, we're going to get to some of the questionnaire sheets, uh, some of the suggestions and um, uh, questions. Uh, we're, we'll answer those about what happened and what we're going to be doing for the future. Uh, today, we are looking at Black Rifle's uh, Coffee Saves Roast. And this is a real nice uh, medium roast. This is the first, first coffee from them I've had that is uh, a bright medium roast uh, that's not on the dark side, dark scale, dark side. Uh, my boys have just gotten into the real Star Wars film, so maybe that's the dark side. Uh, yeah, um, the bag does not say where the coffee comes from, but I'm going to guess this comes from uh, South America, if not um, someplace closer to Central America for this coffee bean. Uh, it's a, it's, the bag says citrus notes and a clean finish and a sweet flavor. And uh, yes, that that's what that, that's what it is. It's and it every other coffee from Black Rifle is is on a dark dark bitter side, and this is bright and sweet and uh, kind of buttery. Uh, this one is one of the few coffees. I think there's only about three or four that are worthy of pour over versus drip. This one it's fantastic pour over, but it needs a lot of coffee. It needs I, for me. I was finding myself needing a lot more grams per water. To get the flavor I wanted, uh, as opposed to a drip version of it. But the flavor profile between pour over and drip is not that much different with this coffee. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, love the bag, and uh, we went ahead and treated ourselves to some of the Black Rifle mugs this season. They had a couple sales, and so this is kind of a nice standard tall mug um, with the Black Rifle logos. That's what we're drinking out of today. Um, all right, Big Throws Clinic. Jolly Big Throws Clinic and the No Safe Throws competition. Uh, we started late this year. Uh, typically this event is held uh, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And late June, early July, we knew that we, we were gonna have to change the venue. And um, not only change the venue, but a whole new proprietor for, doing the event, right? Uh, Rody Sport had never hosted the event, and uh, I, Rody Sport, had never done an event this large. So it was a late in the game to start. It took us a long time to find a venue and the reservations and, and get all that settled to where we could advertise and market it. And um, we were very happy with the outcome in terms of numbers and the uh, feedback we had from athletes and parents was phenomenal uh, and so I given the short timeline and our first shot at hosting a large event uh, we are very very happy with uh, the outcomes um, the 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 feedback from parents and athletes was almost overwhelmingly positive um, because the timeline was short uh, I took the format of Big Throws in Michigan, and we just replicated it here in Ohio. Okay, because I was used to that. I knew how to manipulate that schedule within the day if we had delays or whatnot. Um, so we just replicated it. However, um, something happened during the day where I think the athletes, the parents, and even the presenters, people who had been to Big Throws events before, it was different. There was something more um, inspirational. There was something, there was a special energy, I think, between all of the people in the building uh, that kind of exceeded what past events have been. And I don't think anybody was ready for that, even myself. And it was, it was to the point, it was to such a scale that I think we've left um, big throws clinic. Maybe we've left Jolly Big Throws Clinic behind and 
some of the ideas I have for the future, some of the speakers, and how I want to trend, how I want to structure the days. Um, we're we're going bigger. Okay, it's it has it was something bigger than Jolly Big Throws Clinic. We it it was something grander, something a little more special. And I think I think there's something there's a large um, opportunity for future growth. So I was really excited about that. Was not expecting that at all. Um, unbelievable turnout and the speakers and the guest athletes we had, I cannot thank them enough for the time they spent away from their families and for the sacrifice they spent in, in coming to the event and talking with our athletes and taking pictures and autographs. Um, all of that, aside from the competition, no safe, the very first no safe throws competition and we get a two 65 meter indoor discus throws by Alex Rose. Uh, December 21, he came in uh, in the afternoon to do a little warm up, a little stretch out, and he was throwing 63 meters, not even thinking about it. I thought, oh man, this guy's going to go huge, sure enough. Uh, and we were ready. We were ready. We had full setup. Um, I, you know, a lot of times people host competitions outside of NCAA schools and whatnot, and they have one official there and a bunch of volunteers marking. No, nope. no safe throws. We had six officials running the elite discus event. Six officials at the discus event alone, um, because I knew we were going to have some big throws, and uh, so you know nobody can question whether those were legit or actually happened or if the measurement was right or wrong. Six officials, two throws over 65 meters. Congratulations, Alex Rose. Congratulations, uh, Garage Strength and Miller and their entire crew put on a fantastic show all night for everybody here in, in uh, Northeast Ohio. We also had people come from Oklahoma and Vermont and Michigan. Uh, see, I think I'm probably leaving a couple states out. You know, uh, Reggie Jaggers came from uh, all the way from California, home for Christmas, came out to see us. Um, so unbelievable turnout, great results, very happy with it. Yes, we are doing it next year. Um, details to be announced. Okay, so for the next couple episodes, we're gonna get to the questionnaires, okay? We did questionnaire forms uh, for door prizes, drawings during the clinic and for our research for next year. And there's some questions and stuff and suggestions. And so I'm just gonna go over these and um, give you some immediate feedback so you know where we stand for this last year and, and for next year. Mm. Let's see, this one talks about they really like the coach to athlete ratio. That's true, we, we, we try to have low coach to athlete ratios. I think this clinic between official coaches and volunteer coaches, we had uh, as low as three to one, three athletes to one coach at this clinic, which is kind of unheard of for a lot of other uh, clinics. Um, this person wants to see us do an outdoor camp next year. Yes, uh, Rody Sport went full time January, uh, June 2019, and we did a summer camp in late June. I think it was late June. That was a small one. We had about six or eight people out. Um, that was the first camp that we did when Rody Sport was full time, and uh, we will be doing that again. Yes, uh, we. I think we're going to try and do. An early summer camp and a fall camp, and those will be some small camps for us, and then um, the big one, of course, in the winter time. Okay, so yes, we will be doing a summer camp. Uh, please look our social media pages for announcements on that. Um, let's see, this person says, I like lecture, practical, combo. So the structure of the clinic is you, you throw for 45 minutes, and then you have a sit-down lecture from one of our uh, professional speakers. Uh, for 45 minutes and then you go throw for 45 minutes and then you have another lecture so you have four throwing sections and, and three lecture sections uh, throughout the day um, this person asked for maybe add a section of, uh, section of drills um, yes so we had four we had four event coaches during the four 45 minute throwing sessions we had four circles going at the same time discus rotation shot glide shot and weight 
uh, and then the athletes could rotate through those as they as they wanted and then we also had the coaches rotate a little bit so let's say you know discus is your primary event you got a chance to work with uh, two to maybe three different coaches in that event to get a bunch of different perspectives um, this year I was thinking about setting up some type of a lifting or obstacle course station that people could do on their own um, and then with this how the day went yes we are next year we are going to put in I think we're going to have um, an entire area uh, just for drill work and special exercise work and then um, moving on to having uh, different setups for the throwing times uh, so yes we will be bringing out um, special exercise and drill section specific um, for next year part of the, the theory of big throws is that we spend a little bit of time doing drills five to ten minutes at the beginning of each section and then you just throw um, getting a lot of throws in because most camps you don't get to throw a lot and so we rent an entire field house out so we can throw um, but yes we will put in uh, some extra uh, drill designated zones next year uh, let's see this person says 100% recommend to a friend um, even while well, they're willing to come back as a freshman and uh, in after their college like they're gonna be a freshman next year willing to come back uh, that's pretty positive um, they asked for hammer uh, no <laughs> um, one the danger factor I have a hard time doing hammer at big camps I will do hammer uh, for individual sessions but I won't do it for big camps. Uh, and then also, see in the past we did whammer. We had a whammer competition at one of the big throws clinics. Uh, and I, I suppose maybe we could bring whammer in in the future. Um, we'll have to see where that goes. Uh, but maybe we'll be doing some Scottish hammer at future events. I'll uh, see, let's do a few more here. Um, this person said, quality and experience of staff was fantastic. They really liked the small group sizes. Um, weekend after Christmas or earlier in December for the, uh, the date. Um, so they said uh, the time of year was not the best, but they still made it a priority. Um, yes, the date this year was December 21, Saturday, and we could only have the field house for one day. Okay, there were events in there on Friday and Sunday. I would like to do two a two day event, uh, but this year we had to do it in one day, and the competition was a late ad, so it was just supposed to be the clinic from eight to five. Uh, the competition ended up going till eight forty five at night uh, after the clinic, uh, and yes, this is something else. Um, please give us comments down below on this video if you have a weekend that you really want to see this clinic in okay because so some of this too is we want to bring in some college coaches maybe but the ncaa uh thinks they need to control everybody all the time and so they've instituted these dead periods where college coaches can't do anything with track with their athletes or with prospective athletes it's it's kind of a big big muddle group i have a i think the ncaa is too big for their boots uh but if we do it in the holiday season, some some week, like I think next year, it's on the 18th or the 19th. It's like, it's almost a whole week before Christmas. This year it was like three days before Christmas. And that just kind of the way the cookie falls um, for the year. If we do it that weekend, uh, we could potentially do it between Christmas and New Year's. That's a possibility too. Um, also, the dead period thing, okay? If you wanna come to these events, you wanna come to No Safe Throws, drop some bombs and have college coaches there watching you, we can't do it during a dead period. So give us some suggestions, some feedback. You know, um, the other thing is, if we don't do it during dead period, that pushes us all the way into November for this event, which I think is too early, or it pushes us into January, which is competition season. And everybody has a competition on the weekend. So if you don't want it during the dead period, are you willing to miss a weekend of competition to come to this clinic and maybe compete at our clinic? Okay, give us some feedback, put some comments uh, down below for us. All right, we'll do one more here and then we'll go. Um, 
this person, well, yeah, they just uh, suggested a two-day camp. Yes, we are striving for a two-day camp uh, for next next year. Uh, I'm thinking six hours a day and, and uh, looking at a slightly different uh, structure for that, possibly a pay-per-day type of thing. So, all right, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you so much to all that came to the inaugural Big Throws Camp for Throaty Sport. Um, we will be having some promo videos coming out and we have some amazing performances from our sport athletes on the day. There's a lot of stuff that we're digesting and we'll be, we'll be pushing out over time. Uh, we'll I'll put a link down below for the results from the competition and um, we will be doing a blog synopsis uh, a write up uh, for the clinic as well. So, all right. Thank you very much for watching and all those that came out. Uh, have a good New Year's.